Hey, welcome back to Way of the Wrench and on today's video I'm going to be showing you how to test your LED matrix and your addressable LED strips before you start cutting into them and putting them in your pinball cabinet. That way if something's wrong you can return them. So let's get started. Now as cool as these addressable LED strips are, they mass produce these puppies and it's only a matter of time before you get one that has one or more of these LEDs not working. Now because of the complexity of this pinball cabinet and we're going to cut these strips up and wire it all in there, we need to know that this is 100% working out of the package before we do that. That way if there's a, an issue we can return it for full money refund and get the right stuff and not stress out about why it's not working on our pinball cabinet. Now. In order to test these, it's not like a regular bulb where you just get a ground in your five volts and put it to it and it lights up. It doesn't work like that. So we have to have some kind of microcontroller that is going to be able to send a signal to all of these LED strips and tell them to do something so we can check that. So the way to test this is we're gonna get our Teensy and our Octo board and we're actually gonna to have to put those together for the pinball cabinet anyway. So let me show you how we're gonna solder those together. Now for this project, we're gonna be using a Teensy 3.2. This is basically a microcontroller that is gonna take our inputs from our VPX and from our computer and do some processing and then spit them out as outputs for what we want to happen. And then this board is actually going to mount to this one. This is an Octo 28 shield. And when you put that together, that allows this to be able to control thousands of LEDs and do all kinds of cool patterns. Now, uh, you can get these Teensies pre-soldered with the header strips or the pins. Uh, this one I didn't get that way, so we're gonna be soldering these in. Now, you're gonna have to bust off this header strip for the appropriate amount so that you fill in all of the holes on the sides here. And I'm gonna solder the short end here to the top of the Teensy 3.2. And then the longer terminal strips I'm going to put through into the Octo Shield and flip it over and solder it from the underneath. Some things to know about safety before you start soldering here is you should have safety glasses on because there's the ultra rare chance of having molten metal flick up onto your eyeballs and that would be a horrible experience. Now you do have a very hot soldering iron tip here that could cause a fire so make sure you got no flammable combustible stuff around you. Watch where you put this down so you're not burning things, starting fires and including your electrical cords that will easily melt through that. Uh, other things, you should be doing soldering in a well-ventilated area because there are some nasty fumes that come off the solder. And speaking of solder itself, whether you have solder with lead in it or not, or different fluxes, uh, this stuff has got some stuff that's not really great for you. So I wouldn't eat food while you're soldering while you're doing this project. And when you're done, go wash your hands with soap and water. Now when you're getting ready to solder here, grab yourself a scrap piece of wood. That way you can solder and burn all as much as you want into this and it's not your wife's kitchen table and having to deal with that and get yourself some solder. I would get yourself some good electronics grade solder from an electronics store. Uh, get fairly small gauge. You don't want big chunky stuff. You're not gonna be doing this with like plumbing solder and external fluxes and things like that. Uh, get yourself a wet paper towel so that you can clean the tip of the oxidized solder off of the tip. And then you're gonna need yourself a soldering iron here. Now I've got a nice little adjustable one here. I'm gonna set this to 375 degrees Celsius. And then when you plug it in, that red light will be on. And when it goes off, like it just did, that is telling you that it has reached temperature and uh, you're ready to go. Now you can see the end of the soldering tip is kind of dull looking and kind of grayed out. That is oxidized solder and you don't want to use that. So when you've yacked for too long or you've kind of taken a break for a minute or two, you're going to get that. So what you do is you wipe it on the paper towel and it'll look nice and shiny again, but you've basically taken off all the solder. So right after you're going to tin this, put a little bit of fresh solder on there, that way you can transfer the heat quickly. Now the trick to making a good solder is that the soldering iron here, represented by the Sharpie, needs to be touching both pieces so that it can transfer heat into both of them. So you're not gonna stick it just on the pad or just on the post. You kinda wanna put it right in between the two so that they both get touched. And then you're transferring heat because you had a little bit of solder put on the tip itself. And then that heat starts to radiate through here and through there. And so what you do is you come in on the opposite side with your solder and you apply it here. And then as soon as you see it kind of melt up and go around, that's your solder is all done. And what you're looking for is kind of like a nice little kind of uh, pyramid kind of shape all the way around where it's kind of attached itself and gone around as opposed to a big round blob or a partial fill or something like that. Now the only other thing you need to know about soldering is you don't want these two pieces moving while it is cooling down and hardening up. 
if you have that happen, instead of a nice shiny kind of volcano look, you're gonna have like a dull gray look. That's called a cold solder joint, and usually that means that you're gonna have electrical problems between those two. So uh, let's use that info and start welding up our teensy here. All right, once you've got those header strips soldered onto the teensy, you're gonna very carefully put the teensy board down into the octo board, and you're gonna have the micro USB facing to this side. That way you're not having to try to get it through this piece of plastic here. And have the pins sticking out like this, and now we're gonna solder those pins to the octo board. At this point, it's always a good idea to double check all of your solder joints, make sure that they are no cold solders, they're all nice shiny little volcanoes. There is none of these terminals touching each other. Uh, nothing else on the board is connected just for, by a gloop of solder or anything like that. Check the teensy ones and check the backside there. Make sure none of them are connected and they all look okay. So, moving on. Now to be able to connect to our Octo Shield board, we're gonna need some RJ45 Cat6 cable. Now you probably have one of these laying around the house already. Uh, it's kind of like one of those things you leave behind when you get a new router or a new modem installed in your house. If not, go to the dollar store, really quite cheap. Now one end is going to go into our Octo Shield like that. And then the other end, we're gonna trim off at whatever length you decide. If you don't need a long cable, I would recommend you kind of just go to the halfway point and trim it. That way you've got another half length for another project later. Now for me, I don't know the final resting place for this board and for how long it's got to reach. So I'm basically just going to trim the end here. And then I'm gonna pull out some, a couple wires and I have to solder on one of these guys. This is a three pin JST connector and it's a male connector. So that way I can put it into the female connectors on any of our LED strips or the matrixes or matrices, uh, matrix. I don't know, whatever it is. So uh, let's cut this and start soldering that up. Now we wanna be really careful when we peel this outer kind of sheath back that we're not cutting into the wires underneath. So my recommendation is kind of make a slit at the end and then you can kind of just peel or tear it back and that way you're not gonna risk damaging any of the wires. And then with those wires out of the way, we can just trim the excess here. There we go. Now, out of all of these wires, they're twisted into strands and we only need one strand, which is the orange and the white with the orange stripe. The rest we don't actually need, so I might even just trim those back. And we can unwrap this guy here and we can take off the insulation off of these so that we can solder it onto the other pieces. Right, before you solder these together, you're gonna to wanna to preload a piece of heat shrink for to wrap up all of this. And then I got two pieces of heat shrink here ready to go and cover these up when I'm done that. Now, what you're going to solder here is the orange wire from the RJ45 Cat6 wire to the green, which is your signal wire. You're gonna solder that. And then you're gonna do the white wire to the white with the orange stripe. So we're gonna solder this first. Remember not to move it while it's cooling down. Okay, and once that's cooled down, we're just gonna make sure that this other one, the white with the orange stripe to the white, 
I'm just using kind of heavy blocks, something in the shop here just to keep these wires together and not moving while they are cooling down. Now the red one is for our five volt, but we don't have to put it in here. On each of the LED strips, uh, there's going to be a spot for putting the five volts that we can kind of plug in after. But so for right now, we're just gonna leave that blank. Now to inject our five volt power into our LED strips, I've got two and a half, three foot long black and red 18 gauge wire that I have already gone ahead and crimped on one of these fork connectors so that I can put the one end to the zero ground terminal for the black wire and to my five volt terminal strip for my red wire. Now on the other end of these wires, we are going to attach them to our LED strip. Now we want to make sure that we're putting it to the going in side of the LED strip, which is identified by the arrow. So the arrow is going into the strip, not coming off. That way when we hook up our JST switch with our signal wires, it's on the right way. Now they provide these two little injection wires here and this is where we're going to attach them. Now we don't want to solder these in or anything because we're just testing LEDs for right now. So what you're going to do is put these together at a slight angle, give them a good twist together, and then to make sure that we're safe, we're going to use these things called marionettes. And you basically put them on and as you put them on, you put a little pressure down and you spin them and that kind of grabs the wires and makes them solid. Now do the same thing with the other one. And because this is just temporary twisting of wires, we can go through each of our LED strips and our matrices and make sure that they are working before we start cutting into them. And then you can take the RJ45 cable that we put on the JST connector and you can put those together. They only go on one way, so make sure you got them right. Then you take the other end of our RJ45 cable and you're gonna plug it into this side of your octo board. So if you're looking at the black ports, it's the one on the right. And then to connect this TNC to your computer, we need a USB micro B. And then put your USB into your computer. Now, one thing also to note is when we're doing this kind of like hokey setting up and trial error of things, you have to be careful what you're doing because you're gonna start sending electricity. I got a metal table here and I got exposed pins here for the circuitry on this Teensy. If I left that like that, there's a really good chance I'm gonna fry that Teensy and be out of luck finding a new one right now. So uh, make sure you just kind of think things through a little bit, make sure you're being safe. So for example, at a minimum, I could put this over a piece of cardstock so that it's not uh, transmitting that electricity. So when you first plug in your Teensy Duino, you should have a little LED kind of blinking away here. This is how it's supposed to be, and this tells you that you've got some good communication to your USB, and it's getting power, and it works. If it's not blinking, then something's up with this thing, or it's not brand new. Perfect, now it's time to close this all up and turn the computer on, and I'll show you how to install the software. All right, the very first thing you're gonna do is go to the arduino.cc site. I will put links to all of these below so you can find them as well. And then once you're here, you're gonna go to software, and uh, we want the latest IDE. So pick the operating system you have. So Windows 10 and newer is me. And you can offer to donate here or just download. And this is gonna take a little bit, so I'll fast forward this in the video. Okay, once you've got that downloaded, just double click on it to open it up. You're gonna agree to this. And you're gonna put anyone who uses this computer so everyone can find it. Next, click yes, you're going to agree here. Now this is kind of important, you want to know where this folder goes so don't just randomly click and not be able to find it later. So C drive program files Arduino IDE, so that sounds fine. Okay, and this is all done, I would recommend letting it run and open, there might be a little bit of updating it needs to do, so let's just finish it. All right, now this fully opened, you might find that sometimes when you open this up, there will be some extra stuff that gets downloaded down here, kind of like some updates and drivers and things like that. So if it does need to do that, just let it do it. Uh, other than that, this is ready to go. And then the next thing is we need to download the Teensy Duino stuff. So because Arduino has an updated uh, operating system, the 2.0 or higher, there is no need for a Teensy Duino 
installer anymore. So you just have to follow the instructions and I'll put the link down below. But basically it's saying, uh, open up Arduino, click on file preferences and where it says additional board manager URLs, we're gonna copy this link. So let's right click copy this. And then you put it basically right in here, press okay. And then we go to the boards manager icon and you select the Teensy or type in Teensy. And then when it appears, hover the mouse and expand and click on install. And then that is it. So if we go to file, preferences, I'm gonna go here, right click and paste. And we're gonna press okay. And we're gonna go over to boards manager and we could find Teensy, but if we just start typing it in, okay, and we have a Teensy 3.2. Uh, it looks like it's all this is into one, so it doesn't matter which one. Press install. All right, perfect. So that's successfully installed. All right, now that we have the Arduino and the Teensy stuff set up, this is how we get a sketch onto one of these boards. So uh, what you're gonna wanna do is come and up to here and go select board and you can collect that one there or another way of doing it is going up to tools, go to board, select the board you're using. So TNC 3.2. And then if you do it that way, you also have to go to the port and tell it which COM you're gonna put it on. And it's easy, it's this one here, 3.2, so COM3. Now, the very first time you go to do this, your LED is gonna be flashing with a plugged in Teensy. That's got an automatic blink program that's put in there for that LED to flash. So we need to put a different sketch in there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to File, you go to examples and one of the good things about Arduino is that they've got all these programs already written so you don't have to be a coding expert to figure all this out it's all done for you and you just have to go in and change a couple of things now because we're using that octo board we're going to look for the octo ws 2811 and then in here right now we're interested in just the basic test so that we can test these leds so it's going to load up the sketch and then before you start anything, just make sure that your board's still the same and the port com is still good. Yep. Now, the very first time you go to upload this sketch, you may find that the Teensy Duino loader uh, program comes up. So I'll show you what I mean. If I click verify here, it's gonna to try to compile the sketch and put it on. And what it's gonna do is start up that Teensy loader here. So this is it here. Now, the very first time you go to upload a sketch, you may find that you actually have to go to the board, the Teensy Duino board, and hit the little momentary switch button on top to get it to work. Um, but after you have done a sketch and you're uploading sketches that you change and, and upload later, you won't have to do this. Um, so go ahead and push the button if you haven't already. Uh, this one's already been done, so I'm not gonna do it again. Uh, now, in my software sketch here, this is all written, and the only thing I have to change is the amount of LEDs that I have in my strip that I'm testing. So for me, I'm using my Playfield strip, which is the 144. Ooh. 144, if you're doing the matrix, it'll be 256 uh, or 60. Whatever your LED strip is, this is what you're gonna change there. Now, once you've done that, all you have to do is push upload and it's gonna go ahead and compile it and then it's gonna upload it. And down here, it should say whether it's done compiling and done uploading, you hear some beeps and uh, you're ready to test your LEDs. So let's go see if these worked. All right, there you go. You can see that that entire strip is all lit up. There's no dead spots. If you weren't sure, you would uncoil that and make sure it goes right to the end, but you can see it's changing colors and going all the way to the end. So I know that this strip is good and I can start cutting it up and putting it into my pinball cabinet. Right, now that I know that the one addressable strip is good for my one side of my play field, I have the other addressable strip to test. Now I can't just go in there. I gotta be a little careful because I've got enough amperage in that five volt power supply to kill me outright. So if you've been following along, all I gotta do is hit my light switch here that kills the five volt power and I can safely get in there, disconnect the marionettes and just simply hook up the power to the other one and change over my RJ45 over and then test that one. Now for you guys at home, just make sure you're being safe. You're killing the power 
to your LED strips when you're switching those over so you don't get hurt. Don't want anybody getting toasted. Okay, and then flip the switch. Woo, LED glory. So maybe spend the time to unwrap this. Make sure you got all those LEDs all the way to the end. All the way to the end, perfect. So now that we've tested our side playfield addressable strips, let's check our matrix. Now the matrix is actually 256. So all we gotta do is change that number and re-upload it. Beep, beep, perfect, let's go test this. When you're testing these LED matrixes, uh, you're gonna have to have some power injected about every 180 LEDs. Now this has got 256. So for a basic LED test, I'm hoping that if I inject just in the middle here, that that'll be enough, but uh, we'll know in a second here. So once again, it might look like it's dimming, but I just wanna see that they're lit up. And if they light up, then that's gonna mean that they're working and they just simply needed some more power injection. Now on these matrixes, it'll say D in or D out. So we want the data in, obviously. Okay, let's check that. Woo, nice and bright. Should change color in a second here too. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a pretty slick pattern. So that LED matrix is definitely working. Very cool. Okay, let's switch up to the other matrix and see if it works. Perfect. Let's see if it make it go through another cycle of colors here. Awesome. Man, these puppies are bright. We're gonna have to figure out how to tone these down later. Okay, and then I have one more strip. I actually got two of these, but I'll only show you the one. This one is a 60 LEDs per meter. So they're spaced out a little bit more and I think we're gonna use these on the speakers and maybe the undercarriage. Okay, and once again, this has only got 60 LEDs, so I gotta change that in the sketch and re-upload it as well. So I'll change 256 to 60, re-upload. All right, here we go. There we go. Now, oh, go figure. I thought I was gonna be on a really good lucky streak here. So we got working LEDs. Look at that. That is not working past that LED. And I can see from the side here, there is literally nothing else lit. So that's not good at all here. So, I can't believe this actually happened. I thought I was gonna have nothing to show for this. Now, here is the problem. We don't know exactly where this is broken here, but you do know that this one was the last one that was working. So, there's a good chance that this one is broken and maybe the rest are good. Sometimes it's a couple in a row that are no good. Sometimes you'll fix one by cutting it out and soldering it together and getting rid of that bad LED and all of a sudden it works, but then it only works to a couple bit more. Or sometimes the rest are all no good. It's kind of all up in the air. Now, if you've got lights going up to an LED and then this one doesn't and nothing else works past, it's possible that you have a bad LED right there and that the rest are good. So what I would recommend is make sure you make a little mark so you know where you're cutting for sure. And then, on these little copper oval tabs, you're going to get right in the middle so that when you cut, you still have a little bit of a copper tab to solder the original strip back to the next piece. So you would cut there and there and take that LED out, put these two cut halves together so they almost look like that again, hold them nice and steady and get your soldering iron out and you're gonna solder very carefully the ground and the data and the five volt, and then change your sketch to reflect how many LEDs you took out, and then upload your sketch, and then see if it worked or not. If it doesn't, this is where the frustration lies in. So you would probably try another one, and eventually it's kind of like, how much do I want to hack off here to find out that it doesn't work? And uh, it's kind of hit and miss. Sometimes it's only one or two, sometimes it could be 10 or 20. 
it's uh, kind of all over the place, but uh, that's the, a way to be able to cut out some bad LEDs and get it put back together. All right, upon further inspection and counting back physically how many LEDs were actually working, do you want to take a guess at how many there was? Yep, it was 60 because that's what I put in the sketch. So uh, I thought this was only a meter. This is actually a 16.4 uh, feet long one that I had for a different project. So uh, this one actually has 300 LEDs. So I'm going to change the sketch up to 300 and make sure this all works. There we go. You can see it a little better now. As soon as you see the change of the color, you'll see it too go right down to the center. There we go. They're going to go. Look at it go. Woo! All right, perfect. So all of my LED strips are good to go. I don't have to return anything or cut out bad LEDs and solder them in. All right, there's a wrap in another video from Way of the Wrench. Now that we know that our matrixes and all our expensive LED addressable strips are working 100%, we can now damage them by cutting them up and put them into our pinball cabinet. So look forward to that video. That's coming up soon. And if you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram uh, where you can watch and see all the stuff going on behind the scenes in between videos. Till next time, take it easy.